In this video, I wanna talk about the decentralized cryptocurrency network that's launching soon called Pulse Chain and why we need it. The Pulse Chain network will be a fork of the Ethereum blockchain and I will explain what a fork is. I also wanna mention the decentralized cryptocurrency exchange PulseX that's launching on the Pulse Chain network when it goes live and why that's important. Due to the potential upside opportunity of a brand new decentralized global network, this Hex Mastery video could make a bigger impact on your life than Hex. I want to state up front that I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. Licensed, paid financial advisors weigh and measure your personal situation to construct a specific plan based on your age, income, and goals. That is not what Hex Mastery is. These are my opinions based on six years of crypto investing, and they are anything but perfect. Crypto is volatile, and just like the internet bubble of the early 2000s, 99% of everything that was promised back then went to zero. Only invest what you can afford to lose in assets that you understand and believe in at your own risk. The first half of this video will cast a large net of terms, issues, and historic events in crypto's past to tie everything together in the second half for easier comprehension. It may seem like I'm all over the place. I'm not. I spent days laboring on this script with new crypto investors in mind. If you're new to this, I know exactly what you're going through. The best thing you can do with my content is relax until the end, think about what it means, and then watch it again if you need to. Don't be caught up or distracted or discouraged by words you don't understand. Let it go. The big picture is what's important to understand first, just like assembling a puzzle by easily locating all of the pieces with the straight edge first to construct its perimeter. And that's my specialty, after years of hard lessons learned from crypto investing. These financial concepts and invisible networks with their fancy terms will come in and out of focus for you as they did for me. Be sure to celebrate the fleeting glimpses and aha moments of these concepts when they do occur. Robert Kiyosaki says that repetition is the key to grasping these concepts, and he's 100% correct. I don't care how smart you are. If you're not looking at this in hard, you will never see it. And on the flip side, if you can tie your shoes, you can grasp finance and crypto with nothing more than patience, persistence, and practice. Investing is not math surgery, although it does pay better when you do it right. It's somewhere between algebra and learning how to ride a bike. And if you're not new to crypto, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and you're still in the right place, because I'm about to drop some buried alpha. These narratives have been neglected and obscured for a long time, but they won't die, because truth does to fallacy what light does to darkness. And the solutions are already here, enshrined in immutable code that's linked to decentralized global markets. And Bitcoin already showed us what happens next. As of December 2022, Pulse Chain and Pulse X have not yet launched, and currently no market exists to buy Pulse or Pulse X. Anyone who claims a market exists or offers to sell you these assets is trying to steal your money. Follow Richard Hart on Twitter at Richard Hart Win for official updates. Visit the Telegram group chat t.me forward slash pulsechain.com for official news regarding the Pulse Chain launch. You can also follow the Telegram channel t.me forward slash Hex News, where official news and information is being released regarding the Hex and Pulse Chain ecosystem. If Pulse Chain has launched when you find this video, be sure you understand the difference between the Ethereum network and the Pulse Chain network before you purchase Hex, especially if you are new to cryptocurrencies. This video will provide that clarity. And if you like this content, Consider enrolling in my course at hexmastery.com, where I teach the basics of crypto and hex and how to get set up as well as the best strategy that I'm aware of for maximizing hex and its potential, a basis for crypto security and direct access to me and the Hex Mastery Telegram group chat, where other new hexagons are learning how to secure their financial freedom. All right, disclaimer's over. Now let's get into it. This is called Why Pulse Chain Will Save Crypto. Networks are some of the most valuable things humanity has ever created. Think about the social media networks like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. 
the payment networks of PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Visa, and MasterCard, media networks like YouTube, and whatever the mainstream media has monopolized into, telecommunication networks like AT&T and Verizon, retail networks like Amazon and Walmart. Again, networks, the single entity that everyone plugs into and uses, are some of the most valuable creations in the history of mankind. Those are centralized networks, and they're essential to all of our lives. They're also monopolies, rife with bureaucracy, inefficiency, corruption, censorship, and way too much power. Decentralized blockchains are a new generation of network with a fundamentally different nature. So much money, time, and value is squandered on bureaucracy, where humans, prone to error and corruption, are deputized by laws, policies, and procedures to police conflicts of interest and fraud that attempt to keep institutions honest. And everyone still gets wrecked while no one is held accountable. It's a disaster. Decentralized blockchain networks remove the need for middle management and most of the regulation. They repurpose the savings of fraud, waste, and abuse back to the end user as willing participants in open, battle-tested systems they don't need to ask permission to use. Going forward, which networks do you think will be more trusted and valuable? And here's a pro tip. Investing in these things early is how life-changing wealth is created. Now, before I explain what Pulse Chain is, I need to back up for a minute and explain what a fork is. I'm going to use the 2017 fork of Bitcoin into a network called Bitcoin Cash as an example that will also help me explain Pulse Chain. In the early days of Bitcoin, an amazing group of people flooded the scene to become Bitcoin's early adopter community. These people were attracted to Bitcoin because of the deep-rooted problem that it solves. That problem is essentially the enslavement of humanity by central banks, who print the United States dollar for free that we have to work for and pay taxes on to earn and spend. And if you want to go down that rabbit hole, you can, or you can just get rich investing in the solution. So what happened to Bitcoin's early adopter community? Well, from what I can tell, the original Bitcoin community was infiltrated and subverted. With each Bitcoin boom and bust cycle, a new wave of community members arrived and began contributing to the conversation. The technical and developmental limitations of Bitcoin software, which is to this day unaudited, poorly written spaghetti code, had become contentious points of heated debate. Then began the censorship of Bitcoin community members on Reddit forums and other outlets where the conversation was raging. By 2017, Bitcoin was eight years old. One group of Bitcoin miners and developers wanted to change its fundamental use case and narrative from a peer-to-peer -peer cash network of low fees and high transactions to a store of value network where miners make more on fees with less transactions that cost more. Now, is Bitcoin's use case better as a store of value over a peer-to-peer -peer cash network from a price perspective? Yes, 100%, there's no question. Can the Bitcoin network currently process 1% of all payment transactions globally? Absolutely not, there's no chance. But what's more important to humanity is a peer-to-peer -peer network that businesses, along with everyone else in the world, can use, not just rich people. Everyone needs access to financial services and a place to store and transact their value. And in crypto, the root of this issue lies at the feet of the conflict of interest between users and miners. Users being the millions of customers and participants, holders of an asset on a network, and miners being the small but important group of people who operate, maintain, and control the network. In Bitcoin's case, miners receive Bitcoin inflation and fees for securing the network. They don't buy Bitcoin. They only sell new Bitcoin created by inflation from securing the network that they have full power and control over. Then there's everyone else, the investors, the network participants, the users who do all the buying and holding the price up. Richard Hart's solution to this problem is to repurpose the inflation back to the users who buy and hold the asset on a network that's plenty more secure and can do way more. 
Hex empowers the holders, not the miners. Well, Hex holders are miners because Hex is mining equipment that never ages and doesn't waste electricity, but I digress. To this day, Bitcoin development is gridlocked, unable to make improvements to the base layer network and blockchain. The last improvement Bitcoin made to its base layer mysteriously introduced a bug in the code that would allow anyone who exploited it to mint as many Bitcoin as they wanted. This is called an inflation bug, and it's the worst thing that can happen to a scarce digital asset like Bitcoin. The money printer down at the Federal Reserve is a perfect example of what an inflation bug in the code looks like in real life. Ironically, a Bitcoin Cash developer found the bug that nobody wants to talk about. And instead of minting as many free Bitcoin as he wanted, he disclosed it and the network was quietly patched and repaired. By 2017, the group of Bitcoin miners and developers who believed in a peer-to-peer -peer cash network with low fees decided to break away from the group of miners and developers who believed that store value was the way to go. A portion of the miners decided to fork Bitcoin by mining its blockchain on a different network. This split the chain into two chains on two separate networks that no longer associate with each other. Then began the fight over which Bitcoin was the real Bitcoin. Those who self-custodied their Bitcoin got a one-for-one -one free copy of Bitcoin Cash for each Bitcoin that they personally held, while everyone who held their Bitcoin on an exchange had to beg the exchange for their Bitcoin Cash. Because the exchange, where everyone buys and sells crypto, is not the blockchain. Coins sitting on Coinbase or Binance or Robinhood are not your coins. Coins sitting on a wallet that you generated and secured the keys to are your coins. And when a fork happens, the users who self-custody get a copy of their coins on a new network, free and clear. While the exchange owns and controls the new value of all the coins that they custody and hold, that's created when a network splits into two networks because forks are in the game, and they're a necessary, important chess piece of what makes decentralized blockchain networks so resilient and dynamic. This is an example of how crypto teases out and breathes oxygen into the importance of personal ownership. Ownership of property is a fundamental human right for a reason, because not owning anything means you're a serf, while not being allowed to own anything means you're a slave. This is the conversation crypto is resurrecting as it empowers self-custody and ownership of scarce digital assets. And while we're on the subject of ownership and currency, let me remind everyone that the American people doesn't own or control the currency that they use. The United States dollar is a private currency. All of the work, effort, and innovation conducted by the entire planet is driven by the currency that this private company gets to print for free. And the more United States dollars they print for free, inflation, the higher the prices go for everything in your life. Houses, land, food, rent, vehicles, tires, fuel, medicine, vacations, and pet food. Investors understand this, which is why they store their value in anything but the United States dollar. Because the money printer down at the Federal Reserve doesn't print houses, or land, or Bitcoin, or hex. It only prints the lifeblood of the entire global economy that buys and therefore drives the price up of everything that actually has utility and purpose. Okay, back to what is Pulse Chain, what is a fork, and what happens when a group of miners disagree on the way forward. They split and go their separate ways. That's what happened in 2017 with Bitcoin, and Bitcoin Cash was born. Think of nature's tree of evolution, when say a fish over thousands of years slowly changes into another type of fish. The two fish are similar, but they can't reproduce because now they're two different kinds of fish. With the pulse chain fork of Ethereum, we're witnessing crypto evolution in real time. That's the idea of a fork, along with my crude piecemealing of a very long heated complicated episode of ancient crypto history. Now, I took the time to outline that story because if history doesn't outright repeat itself, then it most certainly rhymes. Ethereum is a decentralized blockchain network that exists because its founder, Vitalik Buterin, 
wanted to build smart contracts onto Bitcoin's spaghetti code that's heavily guarded and politicized by the Bitcoin miners, imposing their conflict of interest against new coins and innovation. So Vitalik abandoned Bitcoin and launched a vastly superior network called Ethereum that currently hosts 20,000 different contracts and coins. 20,000 different ideas, use cases, and attempts at some kind of vision that live and operate on Ethereum. To envision the Ethereum blockchain network, think of a skyscraper with 20,000 offices where a unique business is run out of each office. And the maintenance crew does the upkeep on the building, maintaining the restrooms, hallways, and elevators as millions of people move about the building 24 seven. Those maintenance workers are paid in Ethereum for facilitating every transaction conducted by each unique entity in the building. Hex is one of those entities running and operating on and secured by the Ethereum network. The entities are more commonly known as smart contracts and the sky is the limit. Anyone, anywhere, is free to create and launch any contract that they can come up with. Whether it's a fly-by-night scam riddled with bugs, backdoors, and admin keys, or amazing audited code that has been modeled and stress tested for hundreds of years of perfect functionality. But during the last crypto bull market around April 2021, the gas fees to buy and sell and stake hex became outrageous. And once again, only rich people could participate on the Ethereum blockchain. Now it's time for Ethereum to shed its old skin. And what that looks like in crypto is either a network upgrade, which Ethereum just had, that ironically didn't address the problem of high gas fees or a fork of the network because the chain is what is important. A blockchain is the ledger of all the transactions that have ever taken place on the network. The block is where the transactions are stored on the chain of blocks and the blockchain is that ledger's entire history of transactions. In Bitcoin, a block is created every 10 minutes where roughly 2,000 transactions can fit inside a single block. In Ethereum, a block is created every 13 seconds, where 70 transactions can fit. Blockchains are the first time in history where humans can't go back and change the past. Blockchain data is way more trustworthy than the books of any other business or centralized institution, because the network doesn't care about your agenda or your urgent need to erase reverse, censor, or hide what happened. Transactions are not reversible. No more clawbacks. Nobody but you has access to your money. Banks can't just pull fees out of your account for not maintaining a minimum balance, some arbitrary rule that they made up to charge fees. No more overdraft fees. Businesses rely on your complacency so that they can pull their monthly fee directly from your account. In crypto, you have to push every payment to the party that you want to pay and the coins have to be there to pay them. The business model where companies automatically bang your credit card every month is not possible in crypto. Funds arrive immediately, globally. No more waiting three business days for the digital payment or check to clear. When theft or fraud is committed on the blockchain, the addresses are public for all to see and follow in real time for much higher levels of transparency and accountability. Chain analysis is a powerful skill set where one learns how to search and follow what took place on the blockchain digital ledger. Now the network that secures and maintains the blockchain is important too. But when the maintenance workers who mined and secure the network get greedy, Ethereum's blockchain is an open and public document to literally copy and paste to a new upgraded skyscraper with way more features, better fixtures, facilities, and elevators, where transaction fees are once again dirt cheap so everyone can participate. What happens is every unique business in every office, along with every customer account and their wallet and coins are copied and pasted onto a new network, and the old network continues running as usual. All of those people using the Ethereum network automatically have the same access to all their coins on every wallet that they already control on the new network called PulseChain. 
they have complete and total access to assets on both networks on the same wallet that only they control. Those assets will now have separate markets with separate prices determined by buyers and sellers in each market. This is called forking Ethereum system state into a new network and Richard Hart is launching Pulse Chain out of necessity for the purpose of empowering users by lowering transaction fees on a better network that network participants actually control. Pulse Chain is a much needed check and hedge on the Ethereum network. The networks will run parallel to each other, meaning that all of the innovation built on Ethereum going forward will work perfectly on Pulse Chain too, and vice versa. A critical difference between Pulse Chain and any other network in existence is that the users who hold Pulse will be able to select the nodes that mine and process transactions through staking while maintaining custody of their Pulse coins the entire time. This will create competition between the maintenance workers who will have to have the best equipment and be the most efficient to be able to mine and secure Pulse Chain. This also turns Pulse coin into a yield generating asset that users can stake to earn more Pulse as passive income. Once again, just like with Hex, the users are empowered. Every issue that I've laid out so far in this video stems from a centralized or decentralized network where the customer, the user, the participant has no say so over the direction these networks move in. They are irrelevant. In Bitcoin, users are necessary to hold the price up so that miners can burn 110 terawatts of electricity each year and buy billions of dollars of hardware to support a clunky ass network that can only process 12,000 transactions an hour globally. 110 terawatts is the amount of electricity the developed nation of Sweden uses in a year. If Bitcoin miners paid what the average Floridian pays for electricity, Bitcoin would cost $11 billion a year to run in just electricity. Not mining equipment, not staff or facilities or maintenance, just electricity. That money comes directly from investors buying Bitcoin in the market from miners who must sell it to pay their electric bill. Whenever the price of Bitcoin doubles, so does the cost of running the network because the profitability of mining Bitcoin just doubled. All while the miners tell you with a straight face that it's green and sustainable. It's not. It's a critical flaw that nobody wants to talk about, where billions of dollars of investors' money is set on fire every year in perpetuity. It's like trying to fill a pool with water that has a multi-billion dollar a year hole in the liner that will double in size as the price doubles for no added security whatsoever. Pulse Chain solves this problem too as it empowers holders with lower fees on a better network led by a better founder with a better vision. The Hexacon ecosystem is a community with a different set of values and principles who aren't under whatever weird influence the Ethereum Foundation's core developers, operators, and community are ensconced in. We don't like the direction they're moving in. And Hexacons aren't likely to become influenced because we're spread all over the world not concentrated in some foundation. We are the empowered holders. Ethereum's recent proof of stake upgrade left it less decentralized than ever before. And Ethereum stakers don't maintain self-custody of their coins. They have to give their Ethereum to a third party in order to validate the network in a rollout that already lost a hundred million dollars of users money. The Ethereum upgrade that we just got made it worse, not better, and just a little bit more environmentally friendly. That's a trash garbage and suspect upgrade most Ethereum users I've talked to wanted no part of. This is why forks are an important emergent property of decentralized blockchain networks. The Bitcoin Cash community built an amazing, free, open, mobile application that allows businesses to take payment seamlessly and securely within seconds, and it's rolling out all over Asia. No need to beg a bank for a business account anywhere in the world if you're open to accepting Bitcoin Cash as payment. Just download a free app and create a free wallet without asking anyone's permission. 
where businesses in Asia won't accept your Bitcoin because it takes 30 minutes to complete a transaction that costs $5 to move, but they'll accept your Bitcoin cash payment that costs a penny to send and takes seconds to receive. The exact same code that runs Bitcoin runs Bitcoin cash. The only difference is the miners and the community and the vision. They are two separate networks that forked six years ago, and now we can see why. I would choose the Bitcoin Cash community over the toxic Bitcoin maximalist community every day of the week and twice on Sundays. The Bitcoin community is busy begging legislatures and regulators to label every other cryptocurrency a regulated security to protect their bags. They don't want competition. They hate innovation, unless it's their layer two network, a brand new counterparty where the users no longer have access to record their transactions on the base chain layer. And I bet they build some censorship into it for fun. They want to force you to buy Bitcoin and only Bitcoin. They think Bitcoin is the one and only currency. How does that sound? How about having only one religion too? And only one language? What about having just one culture or one race of people? Only one genre of music? How about one type of food? Hey, here's an idea. Let's take over all of the other countries for one big country, you know, a one world government and one currency that the Bitcoin miners control. There's your proud, toxic Bitcoin maximalist for you. They've lost their way, and thank God we have Bitcoin Cash as a backup. To give you a sense of the scale of the Pulse Chain fork, let's compare it to the Bitcoin Cash fork. Bitcoin has one coin operating on its network because all it can do is send and receive Bitcoin. Ethereum has 20,000 different coins and contracts. Every single Ethereum user will automatically have access to value stored on wallets they control on the Pulse Chain network when it launches. So, if you buy Hex and stake it before the Pulse Chain snapshot and fork, then you will have Hex on both Ethereum and Pulse Chain there will be a different market value for both. It's up to the buyers and sellers in the market as to which coin will be more successful, the high fee network or the new, better, low fee network along with all of its upside potential. The same way Ethereum is used for gas on the Ethereum network, PulseCoin with the ticker symbol PLS will be used to pay for transaction fees on the Pulse network. In July, 2021, there was a 14-day sacrifice phase where anyone could send Hex or Ethereum or USDC or a number of other coins to an Ethereum address to show their support for this political statement. This created a list of Ethereum addresses that will just so happen to receive the total supply of Pulse coins, determined by how much they sacrificed on behalf of that political statement on the new Pulse Chain network when it launches. $700 million was sent to the sacrifice address, including $27 million donated to the SENS.org Foundation for longevity research. As awareness and demand for Pulse Chain grows, nobody has been able to buy or sell Pulse in the market since that 14-day sacrifice window a year and a half ago because the network does not exist yet. In December of 2021, Another 14-day sacrifice phase was launched for this political statement. And a new set of Ethereum addresses was established to distribute the total supply of PulseX to like-minded people who believe freedom of movement and freedom of transactions are important human rights. PulseX is the decentralized exchange that will be live on the Pulse Chain network when it launches. Liquid markets will exist for each of the 20,000 contracts and coins on PulseX immediately. PulseX, with the ticker symbol PLSX, will be the decentralized exchange's native coin. Over $1 billion was sacrificed during that 14-day phase back in December 2021. Both of these sacrifice windows are now closed, and anyone claiming that you can still sacrifice for Pulse Chain or PulseX is trying to get you to send them your money. Like Hex, PulseX will be a yield-generating asset where you can stake for passive income while maintaining full custody of your coins, another user-empowering innovation. PulseX 
will charge users a three-tenths of 1% trading fee for all assets traded. This money goes to liquidity providers who risk their capital, providing liquid markets for everyone to buy and sell into. A portion of the trading fees will also go to PulseX stakers who can safely lock their coins for passive income, along with a buy and burn feature that automatically buys PulseX from the market and burns it forever, a feature Richard Hart calls a pumpamental, where permanent buy pressure is baked into the asset that's driven by trading volume on the exchange. The yield generated by staking PulseX does not come from inflation. It comes from transaction fees paid by every transaction that takes place on the thousands of markets trading on PulseX decentralized exchange. Now, I know this video is getting long, but I have one more sector of the cryptocurrency space that new users need to be aware of. That is centralized exchanges and lending platforms that risk users' cryptocurrency to generate yield. Centralized exchanges have a direct conflict of interest conducting business in the realm of decentralized finance, or DeFi as it's commonly called. Centralized finance, or CeFi, is a regulated financial business, an exchange, ran by humans with a very strong profit motive to facilitate the buying and selling of digital assets for its customers the old-fashioned way, where you are required to send your money to them to trade. A decentralized exchange, or DEX, in the emerging world of DeFi is that exact same exchange except the humans and their profit motive along with the need to surrender your money to trade is removed completely. The DEX is just code. This is not good news for institutions whose bread and butter is making money manipulating other people's money. Centralized exchanges understand that DEXs will have the effect of forcing all users and their funds into self-custody to trade in better markets with less manipulation and more liquidity on the blockchain where they should be trading. Centralized exchanges are the big, flashy, loud casinos that divert users' attention away from why cryptocurrencies are essential to humanity. They take, charge, lose, hack, and steal billions of dollars of retail users' investment money every single crypto cycle. That money gets used to market and advertise the worst aspects of finance and investing to all the new people looking to secure their financial freedom. Instead, they're ushered into a meat grinder of degeneracy with 100x margin lending that liquidates you with markets that the exchange privately controls with no blockchain transparency. Most of the crypto ads that you see on TV and sports jerseys are paid for with the destruction of the exchange's own users to lure in more would-be liberated investors. Centralized exchanges will always find and list the next hype coin to entice more trading volume so that they can earn more on trading fees. While Hex was gatekept and shunned from day one, with over a thousand days of perfect, flawless yield generating uptime, with a 10,000-fold price appreciation in under two years. How come you never heard of Hex before? Because Hex forces you to self-custody to earn passive, trustless yield. If ever there was a sector in the cryptocurrency space with a bigger conflict of interest than network miners, it's centralized exchanges, where more than $600 billion of users' money was hacked, lost, or stolen in 2022 alone. Centralized exchanges are malicious parasites that actively attack the crypto space, feasting on its new users. This is why decentralized exchanges are a bigger revolution than Bitcoin. It signals the end of their horrific reign of financial destruction that has ruined the lives of so many users. And they know it. They are frantically working behind the scenes to do everything in their power to destroy decentralized finance because there's no looking back custody of your coins remains fully in your control 100% of the time. The yield PulseX generates from trading fees will go to pay liquidity providers to secure healthy, liquid, transparent, decentralized markets that are way more reliable than the markets centralized finance can provide. 
with way less wash trading and market manipulation, as well as on-chain transparency of trading, which is a historic, devastating game changer for markets. Because every trade that takes place on the blockchain can be inspected through chain analysis and is way more permanent than the centralized books of shady exchanges. 99% of Hex's trading has taken place on a decentralized exchange directly to and from the user's own personal custody. What other asset in the history of the world can claim that? Custody is everything. Possession is nine-tenths of the law for a reason. The users who hold and stake PulseX from their own wallets will also earn a portion of the fees generated by trading volume. That's where all the money will go, to pay liquidity providers, PulseX stakers, and the PulseX buy and burn. Because the decentralized exchange is just code, with no humans working for it extracting value. Therefore, that value can go back to the users. No more honeypots of concentrated asset pools for hackers to steal all of the crypto of every user stored on a single exchange wallet. No more hype projects with no community or future created just to drive volume on the exchange. No more advertisements promoting destructive, degenerate trading practices that destroy the lives of users. No more affiliate programs that corrupt YouTube influencers who harvest their followers. No more corrupting crypto news outlets who rely on centralized exchange advertising, who constantly forget to tell you how bad centralized exchanges are for crypto. And man, I can keep on going. The crypto space is being destroyed by casinos that hate the idea of you controlling the assets that you own. There is nothing in that for them. Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X is here to save crypto from these grifters. It's here to stop the bleeding and remind everyone why cryptocurrencies were invented. Not your keys, not your crypto. The currency you get out of bed every day to earn and prop up is not having a holistic effect on the society at large. Because the people who control our children's curriculum, mandated in the government schools, forgot to teach us how powerful we are as sovereign citizens. Like it's too advanced and only can be taught in private Ivy League universities or something. Here's the cliff notes from the 250-year-old code enshrined in the Bill of Rights of America's Constitution, a smart contract that uses time to revoke and decentralize power across 50 states at the federal, state, and local levels, and backed by a political revolution that's baked in every two and four years. Your freedom of speech is a right you have to claim, because learning to read and write to become informed and articulate makes you a superpower. Your freedom to assemble is a right you have to claim. Your freedom to keep and bear arms is a right you have to claim. Your freedom to privacy is a right you have to claim. Your right to own and custody your own property is a right you have to claim. Let's use systems and networks that empower us to claim those rights instead of the ones that deny us those critical, fundamental human rights. Customers are not supposed to be the product, and every single network, system, and government that thinks you are the product needs to be abandoned or changed immediately. Now, in the spirit of full disclosure, speaking of centralized ownership and control, this last part is important. At the very end of each sacrifice phase for Pulse Chain and Pulse X, the Hex origin address sacrificed billions of dollars worth of Hex to claim 90% of the total supply of Pulse Chain and 90% of the supply of Pulse X. For context, the Hex origin address also controls 90% of the hex supply. So far, this has worked out amazing for hexagons as that supply is being diluted because the hex origin address is not staking its hex. However, the 10% of the supply that is staked, which is the entire hexagon community, is currently earning 100% of the inflation paid to the hex share pool. So the hex share pool is currently paying its users, its stakers, its holders, its customers 38% APY on average for the past thousand days. 
with perfect, flawless, 100% uptime and zero issues ever since it launched, which is an unheard of miracle in every sector of life, especially business, especially tech, especially crypto. I haven't spoken a lot about Hex in this video, but allow me to point you in the right direction. Hex has circumvented central banking because Hex is also a money printer. Inflation is a very powerful concept that governments use to pay for massive excesses, wars, death, and destruction. In addition to taxation, inflation is a hidden tax on everyone who saves United States dollars, a hidden tax on anyone who earns a wage in dollars, and a hidden tax on anyone who pays higher prices for goods and services in United States dollars. Bitcoin uses its inflation to burn 110 terawatts of electricity every year, while Hex pays its inflation only to those who lock away Hex for up to 15 years in a locked, immutable, yield-generating share pool. So Hex repurposes the massively powerful concept of inflation back to the user, the investor, the saver, Hex monetizes time instead of waste. Hex is the first of its kind in a brand new asset class that I'm calling yield generating assets. Credit to whoever came up with that term. It could have been me, but I doubt it. Hex has been gate kept and censored by corrupt exchanges and neglected by crypto propaganda outlets because it empowers you, the user. The Hex origin address is rumored to be controlled by its founder, Richard Hart, who is also the founder of Pulse Chain and Pulse X. I will link to a video below where I outline in detail what I witnessed the Hex origin address do during the Hex launch for more context. It's a powerful video and the only one of its kind to the best of my knowledge. It tells the truth about Hex that centralized finance and crypto media doesn't want you to hear. The one issue that I have with the Hex origin address controlling 90% of the Pulse Chain supply is that Pulse Chain is a proof of stake network where the holders of Pulse Chain stake their coins to validate nodes that process transactions. But with the Hex origin address controlling 90% of the Pulse Chain supply, it could validate any node that it wants and control transactions on the Pulse Chain network. But at this point, that would be like Elon Musk setting fire to the headquarters of Tesla, SpaceX, Starlink, and Twitter simultaneously. And then, because this is crypto, if it ever got bad, someone would just fork the network. On the flip side, it's also important to consider the protective benefits of having all of that centralized supply in a system that's designed around empowering users. It could become public enemy number one and malicious actors might attack it or use hex to generate yield to fund terrorism or child exploitation, and maybe only their wallets can get censored. It might be a nice deterrent, but who knows? Maybe we're finally in good hands with the Hex origin address. Anyway, I wanna thank you for your time and patience. I hope you found this information useful. Please join us in this historic revolution. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please click the like and subscribe buttons to be notified of future Hex training videos. And if you are ready to invest in Hex, and want to learn the strategy that I use for creating passive income through a Hex staking ladder, I just recorded an online course for you called Hex Mastery. I show you the step-by-step -step process to invest safely so that you have the knowledge to manage your own financial future. Click below or go to hexmastery.com to sign up.